there are certain techniques where when you take a breath, your stomach should move out. And then as you speak in the breath, you should be pulling in. And I do just the reverse. Mm -hmm. So essentially, I'm trying to speak without appropriate breath support. SD patients specialize in, in talking without air. Did you know that? No, I did not. That's why they can't talk. You have to learn to use midsection breath control. And the young lady with you, your name is? Sarah. Doesn't have to do that. All she has to do is put her voice up in the face and talk a little louder, but she doesn't like that because that is a voice that's unfamiliar to her and she doesn't want to put her voice out there. What will people say? Am I right about that, Sarah? What I'm, will people say if you use the voice I'm telling you to use? I'm not conscious that that's my thought, but perhaps it is. I don't know. Talking this way, right. The voice image shatters patience. They will not change, although mechanically what I'm telling you is right on the button. I wrote about that in 1971 peer review. I've been peer reviewed about curing um, bowed vocal cords, unilateral cord paralysis, peer reviewed, medical journals, academic journals, and so forth. But I'm a voice in the wilderness and I'm ignored, which is okay with me. Dr. Cooper, you also indicated to me that as someone with spasmodic dysphonia, I not only need to relearn, in a sense, uh, appropriate breath support, but that I, too, need to raise the pitch of my voice so that I, too, need to speak through uh, the facial area, the nose, the mouth. The face. The face. How did you, you told me in the office that you tried to lower your, you correct me if I'm wrong, you tried to lower your voice, you were a woman in the legal field, so you wanted more authority. You did that gradually from what I understand. I told you that's the kiss of death, that's how you, you wind up with bad raspy voices or what you have, spasmodic dysphonia. I'm saying in essence that you get spasmodic dysphonia because you are self unintentionally aware yourself have induced this condition by squeezing your voice from the lower throat and reversing the breathing. I would absolutely say that there was no personal awareness that I had done that or was even doing that. But it could very well be circumstantial. As I became an adult, matured, went into the legal field, mm -hmm. But it, it certainly wasn't a conscious no, it wasn't. decision. But did you do it? Did you drop the pitch of your voice for authority in the courtroom? Probably so. Okay. I want you to talk to me now. I told you to raise the pitch, right? Right. I want you to say hello to me like I'm a little hard of hearing. Hello? No, it's from the lower throat. I want you to talk in a higher pitch. Hello? Hello? Say it like that. Hi. Hi. There's your voice. Say it again. Hi. Hi one. Hi one. Now Sarah over here is saying, what are you saying as you nod? I notice a change. You notice a change? Absolutely. Is it clear? Definitely. And steady. Do you hear the difference? You don't hear it. As Sarah said before, it's unfamiliar. I think it sounds more childish, girly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't like it, but do you hear the change? Do it again. Say, say hi, hi, one. No, no, you can't do that. Just say, hi. Hi. Say it like you, hi. Hi. Yeah. I'm telling you to raise the pitch. You have lowered the pitch. And when you say hi, what happens to your stomach? You have one hand on your stomach. What happens? Does your does the stomach go out? Yes. It should go in. You're trying to drive the car with the brake on in reverse. No gas in the tank and no air in the, in the tires. That's what SD patients do. I want you to say hi again. Hi. Right. I put you in a voice mirror. I show you 
that when you do what you're doing, your voice is a higher pitch, A, B, C, around middle C. You're much slower when you talk, and you're squeezing like this. Can you feel the squeeze in your lower throat? Yes. Can you hum the first bar of Happy Birthday? <laughs> it's in the lower throat. <laughs> Sarah, can you hear it? Squeeze. Say really like you're shocked at what I just told you. Really? It's lower throat. Say, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What happens to your voice, Sarah? Where does it go? It goes up into her head. That's right. That's the face voice. Say it again. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So I use mm-hmm to get you to put your voice in your face the same as Sarah. And then mm-hmm one. Try it, Sarah. Mm-hmm one, mm-hmm two. Mm-hmm one, mm-hmm two. Mm-hmm, three. You hear it? I do. Then, after a while, when you get the face voice, I can lower the pitch and give you the voice that you feel internally that represents you, but that will hold up. Do you understand? I do. This is just the beginning. Try mm-hmm, one. Mm-hmm, one. Mm-hmm, one. Mm-hmm, one. Go to two, three. Mm-hmm, two. Mm -hmm. Three. Now, how do you normally talk? Count to five. One, two, three, four, five. You're killing your voice. I call it voice suicide. The books I have are free in the library. If you don't spend a cent, anybody wants a book, go to the library, get the, the, the take on how I'm doing what I do. People ask me, how do I make a living? If I'm giving away my books in the library, right? The latest book, Curing Hopeless Voice Problems, calls a strangled voice spasmodic dysphonia, is on my website, free. You download it. Hmm? They asked, how do I make a living? How do I make a living, counsel? By treating people with spasmodic dysphonia and helping them to overcome it. They have myths. They're living by myths. All of you are living by myths. Sarah can overcome her voice problem much faster because she doesn't have spasmodic dysphonia. She's had a number of procedures. Could you briefly tell us about the procedures if you care to? Yes, I've had um, four brain stem surgeries mm -hmm. involving the cranial nerves. Um, Teflon was wrapped around the cranial nerves because I was suffering from vertigo, mm. facial spasm, blepharospasm, and glossopharyngeal neuralgia. I don't see blef, bless, what do you call it? Blepharospasm. I don't see them. You don't have them that I see. I don't have That's them That's eye any spasms. No. I don't have them any longer. You don't have them, but I don't see them now. And uh, some good-hearted, well-intentioned medic told you what was the solution to some of your condition? Microvascular compression, decompression surgery. Yeah, but what is he saying, that you should have your teeth removed or something? Oh, uh, one of the approaches was to rearrange my bite, mm -hmm. and I had all of my teeth reconfigured mm -hmm. early on in my illness. I had a young lady who came to me, sent by a, a dentist, um, and he had removed all of her teeth. She had pain in the, in the jaw. All of them, young lady, beautiful. And she was talking all the way down here. I changed the pitch of her voice to the face, and the pain went away. And she said, oh my God, oh my God. She, didn't have, she shouldn't have had uh, what she said, is the, the extractions of her teeth. Now, we live by myths in all too many areas of our lives. I only can tell you what the what I find in regard to those voice myths that you're living by. Sarah, you think that you're shouting when it's unfamiliar to you. You can use other terms. Give me the mm-hmm, one, mm-hmm, two. Mm-hmm, one. You're dropping on the one. Mm-hmm, one. Mm-hmm, two. Mm-hmm, three. Mm-hmm, four. Mm-hmm, five. Do you feel the buzz up there when you're doing it? I do. You use that voice and you can help yourself to get out of this voice problem that you have. Now, Nancy, you try it, and you see the difference between what you have is called muscle tension disorder and spasmodic dysphonia. 
I wish I was able to uh, maintain the pitch that Sarah has. She can do it easily, but it's unfamiliar, she says, and it's not loved. It's not loved. That voice is not loved. But as I said to you, you use that and we can bring the range down once you get into the face versus the lower throat. Do you understand what I'm doing? I do. All good and great voices are in the face, in the mask. The term mask comes from ancient Greek times when actors on stage 2,500 years ago actually talked in the mask to imitate women because women weren't allowed on stage. Might that be a technique that we should use? Yes. Can you say, mm-hmm? Mm-hmm. No, you go down here. So I'm going to try something else because you can't do that. The mm-hmm is great. So I want you to go above the pitch. You're a pianist, aren't you? Yes. I love that yes. Say yes again. Yes. Sarah, do you hear the change? Yes, I do. Is that voice clear when she says it? It is. You lowered the pitch of your voice for one of varied reasons, and you went into the lower throat. That's how you get strangled voice spasmodic dysphonia. My medical colleagues are well-intentioned. My academician uh, colleagues are well-intentioned. They're all well-intentioned. Intention. You're creating your own problem with spasmodic dysphonia. And Sarah is too. And she has what I call myasthenia laryngeus. It's, it's updated now called muscle tension disorder. It's the same thing, that you're misusing your voice. So Dr. Cooper, what I hear you saying is that uh, people with spasmodic dysphonia have a much greater challenge. Absolutely. Her condition, Sarah's condition, is simple for me. We have a voice image problem, and she's going to hold back. I told her, both of you, before we came to the studio, about Suzette, who was a school teacher who talked in the lowest throat for authority, and it took her two years to change, and she told her ear, nose, and throat doctor that I was misleading her because when she talked higher, when I she talked higher, she didn't like it. It's hoarse. And he told her her voice was perfect. She sounded great. Just do what I said. It took her two years to do what I told her initially. The voice myths, the voice images. You don't hear yourself as you actually are. What you hire is a clinical ear. You need a gifted clinical ear to tell you higher or lower, and then work on your voice image, because you're led by voice myths. I published on the voice image in 1971, peer review. It doesn't make a difference because the patients don't understand peer review, and if they did, they can't hear themselves, so they're not going to let you do for them what ne is needed. So if I hear you correctly, uh, are you suggesting that a good exercise might be to literally take a mask and speak into the mask the way the Greeks did at one time? Might that be a good technique? You could try it. I have another technique for you. What's that? What's the sound she said before that you liked, Sarah? What was the sound that you could hear the difference? When she said yes. Can you say yes? Yes. So you go around, you're a yes lady. You fit into society. We have a lot of yes people. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes is only one syllable. <laughs> now here's how you do it. Say yes. Yes. Now say one. One. Say yes two. Yes two. Yes three. Yes three. So Sarah uses mm -hmm, one, and you use the mantra Yes, one. Yes, two. Right? Right. Okay. Time is fleeting, and I hear the music, so we have to go. It's a fast hour, uh, half hour. It's a pleasure talking with you, ladies and gentlemen. I uh, thank you for joining with me. Mm-hmm. And yes, okay? I'm Ward Cooper. Bye-bye.